Portuguese explorers were the courageous explorers. They were the first people from Europe to set foot on many parts of the world, including Africa, Asia, and the Americas. They were brave, curious, and determined to explore the unknown. Portugal is often credited with being the first dominant nation in Western history. This is due to its pioneering role in the Age of Exploration, which began in the 15th century. Portuguese explorers were the first to reach many parts of the world, including Africa, Asia, and the Americas. They established trade routes and colonies all over the globe, making Portugal one of the wealthiest and most powerful nations in the world. Portugal, where Cabo Roca is located, where the poet Camões said that, the land ends and the ocean starts here. Portugal is located not only on the western tip of the Iberian Peninsula, but also on the western tip of the whole European continent. England is not located on the continent, but is an island country. So if we look at the European continent, Portugal is located clearly at the western tip. But here in Portugal, not only was the land narrow, but the wind of the Atlantic Ocean was very strong. And it was also bad on land where farming didn't work well. This meant everything was important and poor, and it was difficult to live. However, this narrow and barren land at the tip of the European continent was able to become a dominant country. In my opinion, an outstanding leader who had a keen insight allowed this small country to rise to the ranks of dominant nations. Portugal's most daring explorer was Prince Henry, the navigator a man who dreamed of sailing to the ends of the earth. Prince Henry thought that the only way for the Portuguese people to live well and the nation to become prosperous and strong was by practicing maritime trade. The Mediterranean Sea was the only place for maritime trade for Portugal at that time. But in Prince Henry's opinion, the Mediterranean Sea was already packed with many countries, and there were also so many powerful nations. At that time, there were many powerful maritime countries, such as Venice, Genoa, and Sicily around the Mediterranean Sea. So Prince Henry deliberated that he would rather go far out into the ocean. but he couldn't go far out into the ocean in a short period of time. So Prince Henry invested his own funds and established a sailing academy. In the sailing academy, they taught various sailing techniques, such as how to turn the sail in a direction if the wind was a headwind, in what direction if it was a tailwind, and how to pull a boat out if there was a no wind zone. And people systematically learned shipbuilding techniques that built ships that could sail as fast and far as possible and loaded as much cargo as possible and so on. Then they taught the skill of cartography, surveying, and navigation techniques because navigation techniques would enable them to sail with only a map. They established a sailing academy where they could systematically study, teach and research, and then they finally built ships. Surprisingly, in the end, the sailors from the sailing academy started sailing far out to sea around the world. Eventually, the graduates of Henry's Academy of Navigation sailed out of the Mediterranean Sea 
and sail the world such as the Indian and Atlantic Oceans. Then the second was that they reached the Cape of Good Hope at the southernmost end of Africa. And the third was that they even went to Calicut, India. They were not satisfied there, so they sailed further east to the Strait of Malacca and established a trading base there. The Strait of Malacca, the location where present-day Indonesia and Malaysia face each other, is still one of the most important straits in the world. Even today, almost all of the crude oil and other cargo go through this strait to Korea, Japan, and China. Anyway, these Portuguese Sailing Academy graduates first passed through the Strait of Malacca and achieved the title of the first Europeans to establish a trading foothold in the Strait of Malacca. Then the Portuguese sailed to Macau in China and established a trading foothold there and traded with the Chinese. And the Portuguese people went to Japan and for the first time handed firelock guns to the Japanese. In the beginning, the ships were wrecked, but then they opened up trade with Japan. So, Portugal was advancing into the Asian region as the first European country to do so. Famous men who graduated from the Portuguese Navigation School and rose to high ranks were a man named Ptolemyrius, who reached the Cape of Good Hope, and Vasco da Gama, who entered India. Magellan was also Portuguese, but he received support from Spain and sailed. However, he started sailing toward the south and passed through a strait at the tip of South America. He named it the Strait of Magellan because he passed through there. He went through the Strait of Magellan to get to the Pacific Ocean. The first man in human history to explore the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Magellan crossed the Pacific Ocean to reach the Philippines and died there. However, Magellan had already been to the Philippines when he was young. Magellan became the first person to circumnavigate the world. So, it was Magellan who himself physically proved that the Earth is round. In the end, Portugal pioneered the sea route first, so they monopolized the maritime spice trade. These spices, such as cloves, nutmeg, and pepper, etc., were much more expensive than gold at the time. Indeed, for the Portuguese, spices were the number one item in the Asian trade. Portugal had become a country monopolizing imports of not only spices, but also silk and ceramics from China. So, the country Portugal accumulated tremendous wealth. In the end, Portugal opened the great age of sailing with the inside of one leader named Henny, pioneered the blue oceans and enhanced its national prestige tremendously. But the results were not only positive, Discovery was very good for Portugal. But when you look at the whole of human history, in fact, a fairly large side of facts started from that time. The main example was starting the black slave trade systematically and on a large scale. From 1455 or 1450 until around 1850, over 400 years, between 30 and 50 million black slaves were taken from Africa and traded. 
So there was large-scale black slave trading into North America, South America, and Europe, and it still casts a dark shadow globally and historically. And the second issue on this point is that the worship trade started with the dress. Imperial power was threatened. Do you want to go to war or open the port? Do you want to open the door of your port or fight with us? In this way, imperialism began from this time. Imperialism is the practice of one country extending its power and influence over other countries through diplomacy, military force, or colonization. It can also involve the exploitation of the resources and people of those countries. So it can be said that imperialism began from the age of exploration. This is because the Age of Exploration was a period of time when European powers began to explore and colonize other parts of the world. In this way, Portugal was the first European power to start the Age of Exploration, and as a result, it became a powerful and dominant nation. In the next part, we will talk about Spain, which became the second dominant nation in Europe. Thank you for watching the video, Portugal, the first dominant nation in Europe, provided by history and current events. Gina, Bella, Cindy, Helena, and Tony have contributed so far as narrators. Thank you.